our next presentation, like I mentioned, this is going to be hopefully go well. He's actually in Brazil right now, so that's why he's not here. Uh, this is a friend of mine who does a ton of great cross-site scripting research. He works for Securi, uh, working on their web application firewall. He's one of the leading researchers that you probably have ever seen on um, accessespose.com, which is now, I think it's some new name to the site, I guess, which puts up cross-site scripting research. Uh, if you're looking to learn about cross-site cross scripting research, that's a great place to go. And if you're on Twitter and you want to learn more about cross-site scripting, this is definitely one of the people that you want to follow. He also has lots of other fun stuff that he puts up at his protected Twitter account, Brutal Secrets. So he's going to talk about himself a little bit at the beginning, and this is Brute Logic. Go for it. Okay. Hi, Pat. Hi, everyone. Good morning to all. I would like to reintroduce myself. Uh, I am Rodolfo Assis from Brazil uh, and I will talk about cross-site scripting, advanced vectors and I would like to ask, to ask you in advance to forgive my English because English is not my native language so I hope you, you enjoy the, this talk and at least the slides, because it's an interesting subject. So here we go. Uh, we start with about about uh, our agenda. We will go through vector scheme, vector builder, a tool that I built, WebGun, uh, some agnostic event handlers, using native code, filter by pass. The, the main subject of this talk, which are the location-based payloads, and we finish with multi-reflection. Okay? So, I'm a security research at Security, security uh, which is a security company that does malware cleanup and protect the customs with a web application firewall. My job is to break it, to bypass it, to find new ways to, uh, in which an attacker can harm uh, the website of our customers. I'm a former number one at Open Bug Bounty, former access exposer. Uh, ha I have some Hall of Fame, I'm appearing in some Hall of Fame, have some acknowledgement, and as you may know, I'm specializing in XSS. Uh, you may be thinking right now, oh God, another talk on XSS, but I promise to you that this will be kind of different of the things you, you see out there. Uh, we will use the LH1, just for for didactic purpose because uh, in fact you must require a better proof of concept involving at least a document dot domain to be sure that the JavaScript is executing on the victim's page or or in the target. Uh, that that talk will be mainly about the the vectors involving HTML and uh, events, event handlers. Because we have the classic script here, one we will talk about it too, but mainly the, the HTML tags with an event handler. And some stuff may be hard to follow because JavaScript is a very weird language and for those who are not used to it may be a little bit difficult. Vector scheme. We, we start with a, a, a scheme to build the, the vectors. We have the, the regular one, the simplest, which is a tag, an event handler, and then the JavaScript code. A simple example would be... Oops. Sorry, uh, would be the SVG on load, popping an alert one. 
uh, a, a better scheme, a full one, would be like as follows. Uh, we have the extra in, in blue, uh, the spaces in red, uh, what, uh, the mandatory one is the first space. This has to be there. The others are, uh, are just as extra. So, as an example, we have the uh, uh, payload, a vector with T head, which needs the table, the tag table before. So, we have the 0C as a spacer, a separator of the one element to another. We have the style, which makes the font size bigger to make it easier to all mouse over to trigger the prompt box, which is another, just another bo box like alert and config. And we have a bunch of A's to, to make easy the all over to trigger, because with, uh, with, with that A in the page, with the with uh, bigger, it's, uh, it's, there are more chances to the mouse be on it and trigger our prompt box. I made a, a tool called webgun at brutilogic.com.br slash webgun which is meant to build these vectors. So uh, it's not an automated tool, it's just more an interactive cheat sheet. In the end of this talk, I will, I will play with it live to show you. Uh, but I will, I will show you uh, some screenshots. It, it has more than 3,000 unique combinations. Uh, just using the tag and the handler, the event handler. Uh, I'm not counting the... the the JavaScript part, the spaces, the extra, none of this. Just with tag and handle, we have more than 3,000. And probably more, because it needs some improvement. I did a lot of time ago, and I, I have to, to go back to it and update. Uh, you, can, you can use tag or event to, to choose one of them, and then the, the tool will bring the, the respective event to that tag, or the respective tag to that event, and some we can we can choose handlers by browser. We can choose handlers by length for the filter bypass procedure that we will see in a little while. We have the the editing of the vector manually, and we can test on a live target or just use the default page, default test page of the tool. Here is the, the main page, where you can see the, the browsers, we can see the fields that we can choose. Uh, it brings with a default payload, that's the geon load alert one. And ha after clicking on the beauty, we, the, the vector appears on this text area below. And then we click on load to the next page, which is the one we choose the, the target and some other options, and click on shoot. And then the, if the payload is correct and the page is vulnerable, it will pop up an alert or confirm or prompt box. So, uh, in order to, to understand what we will see, we need to also know about some agnostic event handlers, which are the event handlers that can be used with almost any tag. Uh, they can work with arbitrary tags, I mean, tags that you can invent, the name, like Brute, there is no tag brute in HTML5, uh, but it, it is an XML uh, valid tag. Uh, most require user interaction, as we will see, and they all work on major browsers.
É, on blur, on click, on copy, on context menu, on cut, on double click, and so on. Ok? There are 18 event handlers like that. They are very useful and probably a good filter we have to block them all. Simple example, tag build on click all at one. A click me string, a click me text affiliate to in order to click and pop up the alert. Let's see now uh, he using native code because it's important to know that too. And we have two examples. The first, the first one, it's a very common scenario where we have uh, some input uh, landing in the value of uh, input tag of the type hidden. If the code is all in the same line because it was uh, wrote on this way or because a framework did in this way, uh, there are a lot of sites that, that make this stuff. So if you use the, the input script alert with the comment in the end, we will see like this. We have the injector in red and the result in blue. Uh, the, the, not, the native code is, is being commented. So the one that, uh, that executes it's our, our alert one box. The other example, it's the same as before, but now the code is in different lines, which makes us to adapt our, our vector to fit on it and to execute. I'm using uh, my, my script at my website, bridgelog.com.br slash one. It's just a text file with alert, alert one that will be called and executed by that, by that script. Or I can use in an hexadecimal form if the filter is looking for some, uh, some alpha, alpha, alphabetic charts after the double slash. Here we see the injection in red. We are here using the native double quote and the greater than sign. And we see the result in blue. Not so advanced, but this is just an intro to, to what we see in a, in a little while. But it's very useful in access attacks in the wild. And even the, the <coughs> important to uh, bypassing Chrome, as I posted on my blog. But this is to another talk. Okay, filter bypass. Then let's see the basis of filter bypass because there are tons of presentations about it. Just we just review some. We have a, a procedure very useful and it was based on this procedure that I built a uh, webcam. We have uh, an arbitrary tag like X plus a fake handler like on XXX dot one, uh, equals one. We simply start with five charts and start to increase it. So we have ex uh, in our example five, six, seven charts in, in, in total and we see that in the seventh chart the filter blockers so we can just use up to six charts so we have on cut on blur on copy on drag that's why webgun lists the handlers by group by handlers by the number of charts because it's important to test a filter in this way. A filter can't catch the tag, an arbitrary tag, because you can put anything on it. So his, his last chance before the JavaScript part, it's the event handler. So it's really important to, to, to know which handlers it can accept. Uh, 
We have basic tricks like encoding, URL encoding. We have mixed case, which uh, it's still useful until today. Oh God, it's still useful. <laughs> and we have Dublin for very weak filters. And I have spaces like we, we saw in WebGAN. So we have slash, we have tab, new line, and so on. We have quotes, single quotes, double quotes. We have a cool thing that I call it mimetism, mimetism that we we make the our our test tag, our test probe to appear like something the filter will allow to pass. So we have something that, that mimics a closing tag, uh, another one that, that mimics a text outside the tag, because the tag was not really closed, it's, it's between double quotes, so it's parsed as a normal attribute of the tag. And we have some that uh, appears like a URL. So we have HTTP, slash slash, on click, on blur, on any event that we want. So we have the combo, that it's the mix of all of this. Okay, enough. Let's start with the location-based payloads. Location-based payloads are really complex, really complex to to build. Uh, they are based in document.location properties of the JavaScript language and similar stuff. Uh, the, the great part of it is we can avoid special shards, at least between the equal and the greater than, which is the JavaScript part of the vector. It's it's you can be sure that it's a game over to the filter because it's almost impossible to to catch it. A filter better better to catch it to catch us before it. So uh, we have a, a scheme here of the URL with the protocol domain path page etc. We start with the location protocol which returns that that protocol in red of our uh, our scheme we have location host name or document domain that returns the domain location dot origin which returns the protocol domain protocol plus domain we have the location path name with path and page location search which is all after the question mark until the, the hash sign. Previous sibling dot node value document dot body dot text content. I'm calling it before as we will see in a little while. Why? And which is the text one part right before the the tag. Tag name, node name which we call itself. It's the, the name of the tag we are using in the injection. Outer HTML, which is the, the, whole tag, the whole tag we are using. Inner HTML, which we call after. It's the text two in red. Text content, next sibling dot node value, third child, not very, less child, not very, they all are like before, the text two, they are after the main tag. Location hash, of course, it's the hash part of the URL. And the URL, location href, base URI, document URI, it's the full URL, URL, and so we can also use it as we will see in the following payloads. So let's let's start from the beginning to to get on we need to be. And 
taking that that first uh, the first payload SVG on load location, we can with location we can direct a browser a browser to to another page, but we can use the pseudo protocol JavaScript to make the browser execute our JavaScript code, which is R two one. So after it, we can start to play, and we come with the location hash substring one, which will point to the 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 string, the text, the stuff that we have after the rash. Uh, the substring zero, it's the the hash sign itself. The substring one, it's the JavaScript alert one. Uh, next, we have we can split that string into Java's plus script plus alle plus rt plus location hash substring one, which will concatenate all of this with the the hash part which is the parenthesis with the the one parenthesis is a, a very important thing to avoid because fit, filters will always look for it that's what we are trying to do here to avoid parenthesis so next we have another trick to get rid of single quotes which is the the regex the string between the the slash slash java slash dot source the dot source property returns the the rejects itself with no change with no modifications uh, so we can use it to avoid the quotes uh, next line we have the javas again with source script etc but using this time the location hash with brackets brackets with one and two because location hash is a string and as a string we can point to uh, positions on that on uh, on that string it's uh, an array like everything in javascript so we have the left parenthesis the number one right parenthesis and the parents are, are never sent to server. Anything after the hash is never sent to server. It stays on client. So a filter will never see it. But we, we are still using brackets. So let's get rid of them too. Let's see the, the evolution again, but uh, from a new, a, a new perspective. Let's take the JavaScript tag, which is an invented one, an arbitrary one and we try to alert the tag name if we do that we will see the javascript being being alert in the page so we are tempted to try the javascript column alert one all in the tag name it will point the location to it but this will not work because uh, the code will be returned in uppercase and alert can't be uppercase javascript can but not alert so we have to to get rid of that alert in the tag name and place it in the hash part so we have the tag name plus location hash one which will work and the tag name in HTML location hash which concatenates the tag name JavaScript with in HTML which will return the click me part with the, the opening of the comments and, and the hash part which will close the comment and start our POC code our proof of concept code. Uh, right below we see some constructions what we can do with such strings. 
we see JavaScript concatenating to ClickMe, to Wallet in three ways, three different ways, so we can play as we as we wish with this to construct the JavaScript Wallet one the, to execute our JavaScript code. Okay, let's go for taxonomy now. Uh, we have by type, location, location self, location self plus. We have by we have by positioning of these properties. We can use very common names like before, which comes before the tag, of course. Itself, the tag itself, which has something inside, some attributes, for example. We have after, and we have the hash part. Let's let's see the first example, a very simple one, with the inner HTML property. You just have a arbitrary tag, which is the, it's the J1, that with one click, we can point the browser using location to the inner HTML string returner, which is the JavaScript column alt1, and double slash to comment the rest. This will pop up the the alt1 flawless. And another example would be location inside, which is the we are using the name and ID to to construct the JavaScript alt string. We have uh, name as JavaScript in red and the ID as T column alt1 concatenate both, we have our location. So things uh, start to get to get complex. We the next one we already saw, which is the tag name in a HTML location hash. We take the tag name, we take the text after the the tag which is the in HTML and take the hash we start we start a comment and close the comment because we, get, we have to get rid of the hash sign which will not be a valid syntax so we have to comment or we can stringify stringify between quotes stringify the, the hash to, to be able to to use the alert which is the, the next example, the next line we are using single quotes to to turn it, click me and the hash sign into a string and then almost concatenate into alert one because the minus sign is not really concatenation but but it makes the, the JavaScript parser executed. So we have the, the, our last example, we are using a new URL, which is a little bit more complicated. We start with tag name, JavaScript, we jump to the inner HTML, and then we use all the URL, which are injecting, in a reflector, of course, in a reflected case, which gives us the result in blue. The, the URL will repeat the double quote, which will close the, the the first quote, the first double quote, and then we will start. Uh, we will try to 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 minus the the next string, which start with the single quote. Click me JavaScript hash. We will close it in the hash, and then again minus alt1. I hope you, you are getting because it's really hard to explain and I have to talk also in English so <laughs> hope you like and I hope you understand. So location itself plus hash. I'm using tag name and URL. In the red JavaScript uh, I have the all the all the payload, in, all the vector and payload in, in italic to show that we are I'm using a URL. It's the same as before, the same mechanics, 
And but the next one is a little different because I'm using what I call a labelled jump. And uh, in blue we can we can follow it. I'm use HTTP and column uh, as a label. It's a JavaScript label. It's a uh, it's a it's a piece of code. We can name it. We can label it. So I'm using it and comment all the code until the end of the URL, until the, the hash. When it comes to the hash, I'm using a new line character to jump to another line and then make the JavaScript engine execute the other one. So none of the URL will be uh, parsed will be considered to, to execute and just the alert one and we have another example with location location after hash location after plus hash which is the same mechanics before uh, using strings to concatenate to alert one and then using the new line the label jump again to achieve our our execution. This seems a little simpler, so we can move on. Location itself, hash uh, plus half, after plus hash. We have the tag name with Java's alone, and the crypt part after the 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 tag, which is the inner HTML. Again, the URL to to concatenate and close the the single quotes and the double quotes that we open. Again, the next line, the label jump, same trick, using the the new line character. This this is more interesting because we are using itself plus before, which is the tag name JavaScript plus previous sibling dot node value. It's a little bit larger, but for a future, this is not important. The important is to bypass it. And the previous sibling node value will return the, the, the part before the tag. It's the double quote minus alert nine. Just a, a edit mistake. It was to be to be one, but uh, I hope you you got the the point now. Uh, right below we have itself after before, which has the Java's red crypt click me, and then jump again to the previous sibling, which is the alert nine again. Location after itself, which is the combination of uh, in HTML and outer HTML, which start with JavaScript click me, and and then the outer HTML it's all the payload. We have in blue the result of it. We have JavaScript column one, the click me between comments plus alert one with uh, less than side before, which is valid because the one will be will be evaluated with the greater with the less than side to the alert one. And then we, we are comment the rest with the the HTML comment tag exclamation mark. And next we have another Example of it, which is the J. Sorry, sorry. Uh, sorry, guys. And we have the JavaScript click me plus the the outer HTML. In another example, we are close the comments and then creating an empty string and then minus alert one comment in the rest again. 
we have now location after before and after itself. It's a little bit more complicated. Let's jump to the, the blue part, which is the result. JavaScript, click me between commits. And then the, the tag name. In fact, it's out the HTML, but we start with the tag name and the alert name and commit the rest. This requires a, a little bit of attention to to re really understand what is going on here because it's a, it's a larger payload and it's it's they are all built using a browser to test to make the alert uh, popping up. So I don't I don't really hope that we can understand it in just seeing for a while. But this slide will be online. Uh, those who didn't understand it can can take it then to to study later. So and we have some time limits. And uh, let's jump to the the another type of location payloads, which is the selfie side. This these are the these are very cool because we are using the the payload to construct uh, to call the, the the same page the same page we are injecting to make another request another request this time with the payload we want so here we are using location to to return the ID what what we have in ID we have the question mark which will make the location searches for the same page the, sa the same current page because we are starting to to declare the the parameters that we want in that page so we are using the parameter p as an example so we are again uh, turning to the browser to use to use that p that p parameter the with the value of SVG on low, alert one, with a plus sign, where we are encoded, of course, because it will turn into a space. So in blue, we can see the result. It's just the same URL with the with the value of the parameter p changed, changed to what we want to execute. This can trick a, a filter because the filter we will just look for for the stuff on the very beginning of the of our injection which is the SVG ID part it may just just ignore the the that second that second payload we are injecting in the in the destiny of the location uh, we have it again below using the using a, a source a script source as we did before we can also use it with the property after the tag we are using again in red and the question mark the p parameter and but this time we can encode the the payload the final payload because it just stacks and this in this way we can trick the field again location self plus itself we start with location self plus which is the uh, uh, similar mechanics of before but with uh, we are using this time the HPP uh, the APP HPP uh, HTTP parameter pollution. It's a technique that we use uh, another, another uh, a clone of the parameter value, which we insert another p parameter into URL. Uh, in language like like PHP. The second parameter that will be evaluated. So if if we just 
if you just using if you just used to to add it to the URL using using location plus equal outer HTML we so we can we can point the URL to another address and that address will will come with another p parameter after the the original one and this new parameter that will be executed that will be evaluated and execute the our our JavaScript payload. We have again with with it after after the the payload. Again in blue we have the result which will be SVG on load alert one completely unencoded. We have it before same same stuff which can also be used to trick the filter. This time use a document body text content, which is all the, the text that document body has. But we are, we are here thinking that we are injecting into the body, so what comes before can be used with our, our payload to, to put in the final result. Now to, to finish this talk, let's see something more, more easy, which is the multi-reflection. Multi-reflection is, is very common in the wild. Usually the pages are vulnerable uh, to more than one appearance of XSS in the page. And then, and then we have double reflection with a single input red, the result in blue, the code uh, in light gray, uh, which will not be executed because it's uh, according to the HTML parser will be the value of the one attribute. We can see this again, double reflection with a single input to the script, using script. The same construction using, but now this time using the single quote and the comments, which are which can be used in the script tags. We have triple reflection using a single input, which is a little bit uh, complicated, but it still works if we are lucky enough to to find such a native code. That can, that can provide such scenario. We have triple reflection with single input using script also, which is, which is also difficult to achieve because we really need to rely on the native code to, to be able to, to open and close the single quotes, double quotes, etc. And uh, the, is the easiest one, which is the multi-input. When we have two inputs, like P and Q, to, to reflect on the page, it's very easy. Two inputs, it's also easy. So, concluding, XXS vectors can be complex, can easily evade filters, it can blow your mind. <laughs> Yeah, um, thanks, thank you all, and if you have some questions, please be kind enough, because I may not understand it well, the spoken English, but Patty is there to, to help me, so Patty, thank you for this opportunity. Thanks. Anybody have any questions for him? Other than, wow, that was hard. <laughs> but like I mentioned, if you want to talk to him directly, if you're on Twitter, you can find him at Brute Logic, all one word. Um, yeah. He talks back to people on there, which is really nice. Yeah. Yeah.
Thank you guys. Thank you all. We have one question for you. Okay. There's 3,000 plus unique combinations. Can those be loaded into something like groups so we can ensure they're as part of the payloads? Those 3,000 unique uh, attacks that you have in your web gun, can that be loaded into something like Burp Suite or some other tool? Yeah, if I share the database, yes, I'm I'm working, but uh, the problem is it's, uh, that I'm working on a tool privately to my employer, Sukuri, to test the, the WARF. So I'm not sure yet if I can share the database with, with all these uh, payloads because uh, uh, the database has the, the parts, the elements, tag, handlers, etc. And uh, the, the tool just, just combined them to, to build it. I'm not sure if I can share it uh, right now, but I can, I can see the situation and, and answer it later. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Thank you.